Hey there, Smoke Master D coming at you with another episode of Barbecue Buyer's Guide, this time for Backyard Direct Heat Smoker Grills. And here we have the chapter times if you'd like to jump ahead in the episode. Please also remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Just a quick reminder here that these Direct heat smoker grills are very similar to drum smokers. One of the main differences is that smoker grills have an access door to the fire, allowing you to add fuel, whereas drum smokers generally do not. This pit boss drum smoker, however, is one of the exceptions. And now I'm going to take a moment to discuss with you what you won't see in this episode. I'm only covering here the smallest size of smoker grills, those of the size popularized by Bradley Robinson with his mini chud box. This smoker grill from Millscale is what I consider full size, or also what I would call a pig cooker. There are also custom shop builds like this one from Shirley Fabrication that aren't included either. And the reason for this is that it's hard to include something for which there's no set standard make or price. Lastly, in the category of the smoker grills, I generally don't include grills that have mechanisms for raising and lowering the fire, like this Char Griller Legacy Grill. I did, however, make one exception for the Lone Star grills, and maybe I shouldn't have, but it seemed like they were shooting for this smoker grill category when they created their El Patron, so I concluded it anyway. And I may make an episode in the future specifically for these type of grills with the raising and lowering mechanism. So be on the lookout for that. Lastly, if I forgot to include a smoker grill that I should have, my apologies, please mention it in the comments. And now we have some maps. I like to include these because shipping is generally a considerable part of the price of one of these weightier smokers. And if you can buy from a builder closer to you, you might be able to save some money. There was one custom builder I wanted to throw a shout out to in Listowel, Canada, Apex Custom Smokers. He builds smoker grills, and in his latest build, he even put an offset firebox on one of them. If you're up that way, he might be a good choice for you. Then, from west to east, we have Deep Creek Metalworks in Apple Valley, California. Then we have Hurtado Barbecue by Hooray Grills, which is in Wichita, Kansas. Now, Hurtado Barbecue itself is in the Houston, Fort Worth area, but they are built by Hooray Grills in Wichita. Hasty Bake is out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. 1904 Pits is out of St. Louis, Missouri. And then lastly here, TMG Pits is out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And now we have our builders in Texas, who of course need their own slide. Royal Barbecue Fabrication is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Chuds builds theirs in Austin, Texas. Sentex is out of Luling, Texas. Lone Star Grills is north of Houston. And Galindo Smokers is in Channel View, Texas, which is also close to Houston. And now we start with the features, going from the cheapest to most expensive, starting with the Hasty Bake Roughneck Barrel Smoker. There are two versions, the regular, which is made out of Corten Steel, and there's also a stainless steel version. If you don't know what Corten Steel is, it's an architectural grade of steel alloy that rusts over, but not through. So even if the Corten Roughneck rusts, it will still function and hold together. Some people even like the rustic look of it. Stainless steel, of course, is made to be rust resistant, but it costs a lot more. The Corten steel version is $999, with a fully loaded version coming in at $1,249. The stainless steel has a base price of $1,749 and a fully loaded version for $1,999. So here we have some of the features of the Roughneck. There's a pull-out fire basket. The hood and fire door have gasket around them to keep heat and smoke in. There are pinwheel style dampers on the fire door and the back of the smoker for an exhaust. 
A hanging system comes with a rough neck, so you can hang me from S-shaped hooks. A heat diffuser is also provided, which you'll generally want to use if you have meat closer to the fire when you're hanging or using the lower rack, which of course is an extra charge, which brings us to our next page, upgrades. One thing I wanted to point out firstly on this page is that the stainless ash pan is no longer an upgrade. It comes standard now with any of the rough neck smokers you purchase. The last time I covered this smoker, the regular Cortons was about $50 cheaper at $950. When I saw this price had jumped up $50, I also noticed that they were now including the ash pan, which they sell individually for $95. So that higher price was actually a better value. Also, you should note that these three other upgrades are all included in the fully loaded packages. You can, however, buy and install them after the fact for the prices you see here. There's a lower rack edition for $109, a thermometer for $44, and a wheel dolly for $99 that includes that top handle you see on the back of the lid for dollying it around. And here we have the Slinger from 1904 Pits for $1,399. The Slinger has wheels included for wheel bearing around. It comes with a patina finish. There's a damper on the fire access door. The exhaust is on the back under the lid hinge. It comes with a single cooking grate with two positions. The fire grate, however, can fit in that lower position if you want to do any high heat grilling. It might even work as a second grate if you build your fire on the fire brick lined bottom. That fire brick, of course, will help retain your heat. A thermometer is included as well. And here we have extra accessories. The stainless griddle is $184.99. There's a hanging rack for $84.99. An extra cooking grate for that same price, a cover for $119.99, and a stainless flip grate for $259.99. Usually you can use that for chicken wings. Um, really easy to flip those and do it all at once. And now on to the Royale barbecue fabrication. The direct heat cooker is listed for $1,950. Now, for the features, Royale puts a thermometer at great level. There's a fire basket uh, that you can use. There's also a double sliding exhaust damper that is, interestingly, both exhausts are connected to one another. There's a side sliding damper as well on each side, and that's how the air gets into the firebox area. The back wheels are larger than the front casters. Again, so you can dolly this thing around. There are four drop-in half racks that are included that allow you to cook at two different levels at once or to do two full levels if you so choose. There are heat shields that can be dropped in as well to allow for indirect cooking and make it possible to raise the fire basket for higher heat grilling. Side tables are also included this gives the Royale Barbecue Fabrication Smoker Grill a really good value for its price. One upgrade that is available is this rod hanger system for $150. It comes with two rods and you can purchase extra rods for $20 each. This system could indeed work well with the half racks and allow for hanging and grate cooking at the same time. And here we have the El Patron from Lone Star Grills for $1,995. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this unit differs from the other smoker grills in the fundamental way of using a mechanism to raise the fire. I may someday do another episode on similar grills of which the M grills and other hasty bake grills are similar sorts of units. There's a slide damper on the fire door, but LSG also offers a notch system for the door latch if you want to control the air intake that way. There's a thermometer, which is a little high over the grate for my liking, 
but it will still give you a reference point for temperature. Fire brick lines the bottom for heat retention. The grate is made from half inch solid square bars. The big innovation, however, is a pizza door, which could be used for several other purposes for accessing the chamber besides making pizza, keeping heat in better than using the full lid. All in all, a great feature. One more feature to mention is the probe port, which doubles for a rotisserie port. The rotisserie is an extra $495. The pizza stone is $175 and fits perfectly in when you remove a number of grate sections. They sell a plancha, which I believe works in the same way for $95. Their trademark fire basket can also work with this setup and is an extra $99.95. Another crossover, the flywheel from their Santa Maria style grills can be substituted for the crank that raises and lowers the fire grate for $75. The stainless pull bar is $59.95 and the stainless folding shelf is $295. Stainless grates are an extra $645 and eight inch wheels cost 175. Now on to Deep Creek Metalworks. The hot box is sold for $1,999.99. So this is a fairly standard smoker grill in the style of the earlier mini chud boxes that Bradley Robinson used to make. It has the full protective lip around the top. Air intake is through the fire door and how far open it is or isn't. There's a lower grate rail, two thermometers. One of the best features of this smoker grill is the air gap between two quarter inch pieces of steel on the bottom, which will help keep those coals burning even in cold weather. You can add a rotisserie for $100, a tuning plate to do indirect cooks for $95, and an extra rack for $75, a fire grate also for $75. And now at last, we have the chud box. I think they dropped the mini designation. They used to make larger ones. This version here is the new and improved one, but it is the origin chud box of the popularity of this smaller size direct heat smoker grill. There were ones before it, just like there were singers before the Beatles, but the impact that this thing had has been immense, and this episode would not exist without the Chud Box. The raw finished version is $2,000. It's a little ironic how its competitors have all priced themselves cheaper, even the Deep Creek Metalworks being one cent cheaper. As I've said in other videos, a lot of the extra value of this smoker grill comes from the fact that Bradley Robinson uses one and sells it. That being said, he did make a lot of improvements to get to this version. For the most part, you can compare it directly to the Deep Creek just previous to this to see those improvements. The open front is the most notable thing. It makes it more ergonomic, allowing easy access with your hands to the food instead of having to reach over. The feasibility of shipping became a large part of his design with the X-shaped underbelly, allows you to bolt on the legs without the bolts going up into the fire chamber. It adds a little bit of heat retention as well because of uh, the air gap created by the X, but not a whole lot. You saw on the previous slides that the Deep Creek, uh, they shipped by strapping the grill to a pallet. So I'm not exactly sure how much improvement comes from this design in savings in shipping. The intake is Bread's trademark notch door system that is now widely copied. The metal thickness is different in different parts of the smoker grill. It's an eight inch in the hood, mostly for the easy opening of the grill, uh, a quarter inch on the door and three sixteenths inch on the body. Here we have the upgrades. There's a rotisserie kit for $150, a grill basket for $95, and a side table for $89. And now we come to the Hurtado Smokebox from Hurtado Barbecue and Hooray Grills. 
Now, Hurtado Barbecue, if you haven't heard of them, has two locations in the Fort Worth area of Texas and has become phenomenally successful there. Hooray Grills partnered with Hurtado on this grill. You may remember Hooray Grills from my original Santa Maria Grills episode, and they make a few different Santa Maria Grills as well. The raw version of this smoke box is $2,250, and it's $500 more to have it with paint. Here we have another smoker grill with an open front for easy, great access with your hands. There's a lot of headroom on this smoke box. Some of that may be filled with the top half rack, um, which will be an extra charge. Uh, Pre-ordered smoke boxes got it for free, but I believe that time's passed now. There are three slots for tuning plates that you can slide in to do indirect hooking. Another thing to notice is how much smaller the grill area is up top than the body of the smoke box below. This is due to a double wall around the entirety of the body of the grill. This makes the smoke box a real wild card for heat retention. Maybe it has the best heat retention because of that, but I don't know. The fire grate seems to be perforated and bent kind of in a zigzag fashion. Uh, other future add-ons include uh, a rotisserie and side tables, which I believe are coming out in another month or so. I have prices for them on the next slide. And here I put some more details of the features from their website. You can read them in that white box. Um, I also put on some images from a new plancha option. The design of this plancha is pretty smart. It replaces the regular grate. So you take that regular grate out and put the plancha in. It has a hole for draining the grease. And where you slide in those plates for indirect cooking, you can also slide in a grease pan. And the hole goes right over the grease pan and you can scrape the grease and junk down into that while you're using it. On the side of the screen, you can see the prices for these upgrades. Not everything is finalized yet, so you'll have to check their website for pictures on some of these. The Hydra smoke tray is the one that gives me the most pause for wonderment, because I don't know what it is. Uh, the rotisserie is $325, the plancha $225, searing grate also $225, side tables for $150, top half rack for $75, and this mysterious Hydra smoke tray is $100. And here we have the Little King from Galindo Smokers. Its design seems to be a thicker steeled rendition of the earlier versions of the Mini Chud Box. Its cost is $2,500. There aren't many pictures of the Little King. We know that it has a heat brick lined floor, good sized casters, and what else that we actually see here. And uh, that's it. You'll have to call them for more information. Next is the Centex Backyard Direct Heat Cooker for $2,950. This thing is built thick. Quarter inch steel, double walled bottom. Centex seems to know what they're doing with building uh, smokers in general. Wheels turn uh, dampers on both sides. Some good casters. Nothing particularly innovative in the design, but it looks solid, well-built, classic, you might say. Lastly, we have the TMG Pits Dumpster for $2,999.99. The pull bar is included that you see. Lift handles go on the grates, uh, so you can lift the grate out if you have something particularly large there, like perhaps a suckling pig. There's a double walled bottom for heat retention, double doors. That's the first that we've seen that in this episode. They're reinforced against warping. There's a slide out lower rack that comes standard. Another first um, and another first indeed a door counterweight. Double exhaust stacks there. The air intakes are slides. They provide some expanded metal to add a protective grate to keep coals from falling out. You can also trick this thing out um, if you have that sort of money. But boy, does it look amazing. And now we're on to the charts. 
starting, of course, with price. The Hasty Bake Roughneck takes the low end, just under $1,000. There are a lot of smoker grills right around $2,000. And then you see sort of a middling area with the Hurtado smoke box and the Galindo's Little King in the mid 2000s range. And then at the high end near 3000, we have that Centex and the TMG dumpster. Here are the inches squared for the main rack. And it hurts my heart a little to see the mini chud box at the very bottom of this list. The Roughneck comes next, then the Hurtado smoke box, then the 1904 pits, the Royal Barbecue Fabrication, Deep Creek, Centex, Little King, the Dumpster, and surprise at the top of the list is that LSG Patron. Now, in the dollar per inches squared for just the main rack, we have the Roughneck Court and Steel as the best, then the LSG Patron, the 1904 Slinger, the Roughneck Fully Loaded, the Royal Fabrications, the Deep Creek, the TMG Dumpster, the Little King, Fully Loaded Stainless Roughneck, the Hurtado Smoke Box, the Centex, and last of all, the Chud Box. And now we have added additional racks that we know about. The Little King, for example, could easily have an extra rack to double its space, but I don't know that it does have an extra rack. They're the kind of shop that you could probably uh, negotiate a price for that second rack, you know, the custom build. Maybe it's already included and I just don't know. Here we see that the Roughneck jumps up to 776, the Hurtado up to 657, the Slinger to 875, the Royal Fabrication to 960, the Deep Creek to 1016, the TMG Dumpster jumps to 1312 inches squared, uh, and that, of course, actually comes standard. So really good that way. In this one, I have how the extra rack changes the dollars per inches squared in cases where I know the price of that extra rack. The Roughneck Corton drops all the way to $1.43 per inches squared, $1.61 for the fully loaded Corton. The 1904 Slinger drops to $1.70 per inches squared. Royal Fab drops down to $2.03 and the Deep Creek to $2.04 uh, per inches squared, the Dumpster to $2.29 per inches squared, the Stainless Roughneck to $2.58, and the Hurtado to $3.54. Here we have the thickness of each cooker in inches. I should note that the Chud Box has different thicknesses for the hood and fire door, but the 3 16 of the main body is what we went with for our number here. And I'm not going to read all these out. You can just take a look at uh, those thicknesses. Now in this slide, I have represented what I think to be the relative comparative heat retention between all these units. One thing to note is that while I did take the thicknesses into account here and the fire brick and double walls, there's a little bit of subjectivity here. So don't take this slide is the gospel truth. Also, please note that the designation of zero for the Roughneck doesn't mean that I think it has no heat retention, just that it has what I believe to be the least. Um, that's how these 10 point scales work for me. The least is represented by zero, and what I think is the highest is represented by 10. And I modulate uh, using the steel thickness and other factors between there uh, the difference that I think is between them. And also, as I stated before, the Hurtado smoke box may be the one that I have wrong here. Its metal isn't particularly thick, but with that complete double wall, maybe it should be higher. Now on this slide, I've averaged together my 10 point heat retention projection and the dollars per inches squared main rack on a 10 point scale to give a combined figure the Lone Star Grills El Patron comes out as the winner. Remember that this is a measure of value that doesn't really take into account additional features of the Smoker Grills, even though the El Patron does have some impressive features. Uh, the Little King comes next, then the Dumpster, Deep Creek, the Slinger, Royal Barbecue Fabrications, the Centex, the Roughneck, 
Furtado smoke box, and then the chud box. All right. In this slide, I based the dollar per inches squared 10 point scale to include the extra racks where the prices were known. Uh, and you can see how it changes the dynamic sum because now the deep creek comes out on top, then the dumpster, which the dumpster has both racks just in its regular price. So maybe this is a better uh, place to look at comparison for it, as well as the Royal Barbecue Fabrication that comes next. The El Patron comes fourth now instead of first. The 1904 Slinger, Little King, Hurtado Smoke Box, the Sentex, the Roughneck, and then the Chud Box. And lastly, we come to my thoughts. And I'm going to start with uh, doing it by sort of budget. So if you're looking at something under $1,500, you have two options, the Hasty Bait Court and Steel and the 1904 Slinger. And I think both of them are really good options. I really like the Court and Steel, the Hasty Bake, and all the design features uh, make it really a good overall cooker. You can do uh, different kinds of cooking on it with indirect and direct. Having said that, though, I actually prefer the 1904 Slinger, and it's really just a personal preference for me. I prefer the open area for the firebox over a fire basket. I may not use the fire grate, or I'd see if I could use it as the second grate. I'm not sure uh, that there would be an indirect cooking method for the Slinger, but I have other cookers to do that with, and I would just use that one for direct heat cooking. So if I was in that budget range, I would go with the 1904 Slinger, but I wouldn't hold it against anyone who went with the, the Roughneck. Now, for the $2,000 range, I think if you really get a lot out of watching Chud's videos, you might want to go with the Chud box. It's well designed. Uh, I also really like the Lone Star Grills El Patron, especially that pizza door. But one thing to watch with LSG is that when you start adding up the additional features you want, because there's so, so many of them, uh, and, and one thing that I think is that they don't include some things that I should just be included, like the pull bar. Uh, you start adding up to a smoker that could be at the $3,000 level instead of the $2,000 level. So just watch that. The Royal Barbecue Fabrication uh, smoker grill appears to be really well thought out, especially with its half racks. The addition of those four half racks, the included side tables and wheels actually make it one of the best values for its price point. Uh, there's also a lot of value in the Deep Creek Smoker for its heat retention. And I think if you're out on the West Coast, I would definitely consider that one just because of its proximity. As for the Stainless Roughneck, I think I would just go with Court and Steel. I think that if you take care of it, it'll last, and I don't see the benefit really in, in going with a fully stainless version. Now, in the mid-2000s, we have the Hurtado Smoke Box and the Galinda Little King. If I were in the Houston area, I would consider the Little King. It's really thick and well-built. The Hurtado Smoke Box seems to be bringing a lot of innovation to their smoker grill, which makes it pretty exciting. I like the headroom on it. It seems like they're going for an everything cooker, sort of like uh, the El Patron. And if you want something that seems like it can do it all in one, I think maybe the Hurtado smoke box could be for you. At the upper level, I'd like the aesthetics and the purity of the Sentex direct heat cooker. That being said, I feel like you get a lot more bang for your buck with the TMG dumpster. So that extra $50 is what I would probably go. Um, and even though, you know, they've named it after a garbage uh, disposal, it still really looks rather slick. So those were my thoughts. Please share your thoughts of these smoker grills down in the comments. And of course, if you own any of them, please leave your review in the comments to help any potential buyers. And lastly, as always, go get your smoke on, y'all.